you don't know what it means to this old guy from Balco. You know that you people have been around for a while. You know what Balco means. It's that, and you know what they you mean to them. You don't want to go there, Custer. But thank you so much. I I can't. I can't tell you what I feel. I'm so humble. Yeah, an opportunity. Yeah, you know, you look back and uh, me coming here five years ago and having an opportunity to teach uh, music was such a blessing. <laughs> First two or three months there, and things were going so well. The kids were coming in and prepared. And it was just, wow. I went home, I said, I don't know, but this is really neat. I'm not having any problems. And she said, well, you're kind of old. You're probably afraid they're going to give you a heart attack. <laughs> so I thought, you know, being old is not all that bad. But it's working. But I had a wonderful three years uh, working with kids. And through that, formed a good relationship, not only with the students, but with the staff and with the community. Thought I wanted to get into ranching and farming after that. Yeah, that didn't work out. I decided my calling and I had an opportunity to come and and be the superintendent, which has been another blessing, and it is a godsend to me. And I say that <laughs> in that it's a, made me get up out of bed. I had a purpose, and I thank so much for the staff, for the administrative staff, to the Board of Education, for hanging in there and having patience with me as I worked my way back into uh, full-time and for those of you that might not know, about a little over a year ago, I was di diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And me saying that, those of you that are facing health issues, I want to encourage you to read a book. It's called God's Healing Words. God's Healing Words. That book, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, set me on the right path on how to seek God's healing. And I'm telling you folks, your prayers work. Amen. They work. I am in the process of being healed. Now, it wasn't like I thought. I had people come to my office and to my house, lay hands on me and pray for me. Okay, God. It's not happening. And it's good that it didn't happen instantaneously. Not to say that it won't for those, but not for me because God had something in store for me. Now, just a little background, I was raised in the church. I'm a, from the Quaker church. Um, uh, we wouldn't have done this kind of music, but uh, that's where I got my start in music. And uh, the church is just a great place to, to do that, to get started uh, either up speaking or it, it's, it's a very forgiving and accepting place uh, for that. But... I was in church uh, young. We, that's back when we went three days a, a week, you know, not Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. Raised, uh, I've lived my life in church and a part of its service. And uh, I, I had the skills of some music and some leadership skills and all of that to be a part of the church and felt comfortable with that. And there's a reason why I want to say that because today I want to talk to you and I may, I hope, stir your heart and your mind and ask you, where are you truly with your relationship with Jesus Christ? And this is the realization that I came to for myself. And this is hindsight, which is 2020. As I look back, doing all that in the church, and we were in the Methodist church for 23 years. We were in Kansas. We've been in the Mennonite church for 10 years down at Balco. I've been in the Nazarene and the Presbyterian, all of those churches, and they preached the gospel. And I did all those things. But I realized, looking back, I was missing out on the day-to-day -day blessing that Jesus Christ has for every one of you. And he had to let me go to the place that I went to as far as the cancer, as far as forcing me to look deeper in what he has to offer for me. 
a little bit more background. In February, I was diagnosed with what's called CIPD. It's an advanced form of neuropathy. And what happened was I lost control of my muscles. I got weak. I was basically on my back. I couldn't do anything. Some of the kids here, I know Debbie came by to see me in the hospital. Uh, wow. Put me out. Put me down. What a humbling experience when you have to lay there and somebody has to take care of those day-to-day -day needs. You can't do it. I couldn't get my hands above my chest. I couldn't raise my legs off the bed. When they came in, I called them every two two hours to come and turn me because I'd lost so much weight they were afraid I was going to get bed sores and I couldn't reach the button that was right there without doing this because I'd got so weak and I say all that in that why is God putting me through this and now I realize because he had something bigger and better for us and the Bible talks about that the fact that we're supposed to rejoice in our struggle. I never truly understood that until all of this happened. Uh, what that meant. I want to go back to the book that I talked about. God's Healing Words. In that book, it talks about several things. But it really got me to thinking about my prayer life, there's a story. You all know it. Paul and Silas is out doing God's work, and what happens? Authorities come and arrest them and put them in a dungeon, put them in shackles. What they do? You know what they did? Anybody know? Ah, the teacher came out at me right then. <laughs> Raise your hand. First one answers. Mrs. Lynch. Oh, wouldn't you? She's so studious. Remember? They sat in there and they praised God. They sang. They rejoiced in God. And what happened? The earth shook and the shackles broke. And for the other prisoners, they were freed as well. What does that say about us as a church? We praise God. And the shackles we broke, and others will, pe will come with us as well. But you know what happened after that, which I think is as much part of the story as God's, God's freeing them from their bondage because they prayed? This is the, the jailer come running in, saw the situation, and wants to take his own life. And they go, no, 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 no. We're all still here. We're still here. What a witness. We'll stay here with you. And through that, it began to soak into this thick head of mine. What do I do? Am I a servant of God, or is God my servant? And as I reflect back, I hate to say it, but my Christian life was God being my servant. What did I do? Things were great. Boy, I had it. God has blessed us. We're headed down. I'm retired. Things are going good. All during life. We were blessed with great children. Those children were raised in the church. They're raising their children as Christians as well. What more could you ask? But one thing, as I said, was missing. I wasn't committed to being a Christian. And as I began to read that, it talked in that book about asking Jesus to come down. Asking the Holy Spirit. Now, you know what the Holy Spirit is, right? The Holy Spirit was put there so we could go directly to Jesus. We didn't have to go to a priest. We didn't have to offer sacrifice because the sacrifice was already offered to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We can go directly to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And that book said, when we pray, we need to ask the Holy Spirit. Now, do you do that? I've never done that before. I've never asked the Holy Spirit to come down on me. 
But I remember exactly when it was when I decided, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to see what happens. 6.30 on a Saturday morning. Now, I'd had chemo treatment on Thursday, and when I take treatment, they give me steroids. Now, if you don't know anything about drugs, steroids is probably the drug because it just hypes you up. Thursday night, slept maybe an hour or two. Friday, I'm full of energy. I go watch the elementary kids come in. And I'm there, and Friday night, yes, I can't sleep much, and Saturday morning, mid-morning, I crash. And I sleep for about 24 hours, and I did that every time, just about every time after a treatment. But at 7, 6.30 that morning, I hadn't had a lot of sleep, but and I was feeling so, you know, yes, I knew God was there. And I again began to pray, and this is what I'm going to ask you to do, is think about your prayer life. In 1 Thessalonians, when Paul writes to the Thessalonians, because he had started a church there and didn't get to spend a lot of time. So he's writing them letters, helping them to grow as a church, understand their, their uh, mission. And... In Thessalonians 5, 16, it says, Be joyful always. Be joyful always. And then it tells you, he tells them what to do. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. It's easy to give thanks when things are going well, but when... You're, you can't do anything and you can't take care of yourself. You have to work at it a little bit harder. But anyway, that morning, as I was praying, I just, I just went to God and I, I remembered Paul and Silas. And what did they do? And I just began to praise God. Praise him. Praise him. See, it's still tender on me. Isn't it? Sorry. <sighs> praise him and praise him. And I went to a place. I prayed, God, don't let me leave this place. It was so peaceful there. And that's what we want as Christians, right? We want to experience peace. We want to experience God's true peace upon us. And I'm telling you, the only way you can do it is go to prayer. Just to go to prayer and ask God. Okay. And, and I was there. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And looked up, and there it was 7.30. I thought I'd just been praying for a few, few minutes, but no. An hour had passed, and I'd gone to that place that God had prepared me. And I'm not talking heaven. There where I was, in that bed. And I finally understood what it meant to have pure peace. Yes, I'd experienced it before. God bless me. And from then on, that's the way I pray. I spend a lot of time. Nowadays, because I can walk now, at one time I couldn't walk every step, and I mean this literally. I praise God because I still have weird sensations in my feet right now, in my hands, in my back, because the CIPD was all over me. But it's a reminder of what God's blessing is all about. I'm going to give a praise. Last week for, at work and yesterday was absolutely fantastic. And I praised God every day for it. At work, high energy. I was so blessed to watch our teachers do what they do and hear their concerns that you ha they have for your children. That's such a blessing that we have such committed people, such positive people that work with your children. And yesterday, I got to do something. We got a farm. My brother and I have a farm. Well, it's, he works and I just show up occasionally. But I knew we needed to do some stuff. We needed to bury some electric lines on the farm. And I finally got the mobility of my legs and the strength of my arms and my back because I had to dig a little bit to dig the trenches. Now, I didn't do it by hand. Don't get me wrong. Okay, this machine I followed. But do that to lay 700 feet of line and get that all ready to go to finish up. 
what a blessing for this old guy that one time was just a distant, distant memory. And the reason why? God. God heals me. God healed me. Amen? Amen. Yes, yes. And you can tell probably that I'm pretty passionate about this. And my desire for you is to get just a little bit, to really think, am I a casual? Is my relationship with Jesus Christ a casual one that I call on when I need help? You know how it is? What I found out was a lot of the times through life, because I'm like a lot of you, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. There's something out there. I'll do it. And I wasn't including God in that. Even in the small things. He was back there and I was walking up here and I'd oh, get into trouble. And I, oh God, come here, come here, come here. Okay, I'm having trouble. And I was treating him as my servant instead of me being his servant. Understand what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? Boy, does that sound like a teacher. All right. I was treating him like my servant instead of me being a servant. And it's so important in my mindset. Now I understand that. Now God walks here every day. Every day he's here. He's not back there. I don't dare let him. When Debbie asked me to come and talk, sure. I don't have a choice. Now that sounds kind of bad, but are you kidding me? What God's done for me, and I say no. I better watch out. The lightning's going to strike. You know what I mean? Sure, I'll speak. And hopefully I can bring some encouragement, some message, something I can say that will encourage you to increase your life as a Christian. You know what happens when you increase your life as a Christian here, folks? You've all seen this. Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the church, and what? There's the people. The strength of this church is with you and your spiritual life. If you want a strong, vibrant church, you individually have to become strong and vibrant Christians. Listening, reading the Word. Something happened to Paul and I's relationship. Ah, oh, I got you. Got your attention. Oh, crud. We married 46 years. Wonder what happened there. When I was down and out and couldn't get up and take care of myself, she had to adjust her day to get me dressed, to get me up, to help me take care of my needs. That meant she got up at least an hour earlier every day. Now, you know, that's, that's a sacrifice. And speaking of that, this lady... Being a caregiver, oh my goodness gracious, she has stories to tell. <laughs> you know, pretty tough, pretty tough. 39 days basically at home by herself up on the hill on the farm, wondering what's happened with, with my husband down there. What am I going to do when he comes home? He can't walk. But God blessed us, didn't he? But I'm telling you folks, and I don't mean to get emotional, it just happens. God blesses me, and I, I, I just so desperately want you to know I love this community, and I don't say that flippantly. I love this You guys have stepped forward time and time again, stopping me out in the parking lot when you see me walking and say, hey, listen, I've been thinking about you, okay? You don't know how that means and what that makes me feel like. And everybody else that you do that to, you're such a caring community. I, like I said, God sent me here because you, he knew that you would take care of me. And I'm indebted to you. I don't know what I can do for sure to pay you back other than just pray for you and just continue to work the best I can here. But as a church, like I said, you need to be, if you want to be a strong and vibrant church, you need to be a strong, individually a strong and vibrant. Now, your pastor mentioned something, and on into this passage, and it's the final instructions of 
what Paul is telling. It says here that you need to leave it, live in peace with each other. All right, no squabbling or anything. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. You know, that's tough as a church. If you see somebody just kind of being a slacker, not doing their job, hey, you need to pick it up. We sure could use your help. That's tough to go to somebody. Encourage the timid. You know, a lot of people you just, you just need a little, little help. All right. Help the weak, which I hope we do. But here's the kicker. And be patient with everyone. Boy, that's tough. I'm not real patient sometimes. Uh, and make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Uh, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. And then the next one, it again, says, be joyful always, as I mentioned earlier. And what does that mean? That means to have a joyful heart. That means to be at peace. And again, the only way you can get that peace is through prayer and reading the Scripture. Now, going back to what I was saying about Paula and I and our relationship changing, I know you're wondering what happened there. She could have said, the heck with that old guy. No, he, she wouldn't have done that even. But that has happened. You know, the, the Things get in a struggle and everybody runs for cover. But she didn't. She hung in there. But one of the things, the, the blessings that came from that, me laying there, is she would get up early. She would go make coffee and bring me a cup of coffee. And we would sit in bed, and we begin to have devotions together. We'd never done that in all of our married life. And if you do that as a married couple, fantastic. All right? If you do that with your children, even better. But we began to uh, um, have devotions. And the devotional we use is called, it's called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. I don't know if you know about it. It's pretty, boy, it just it nailed me this morning when we were reading it before we came. It's really good. Jesus Calling. Everybody write that down. All right, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. If you don't have a devotional, I know the Methodist Church uh, provides them, or they used to, I'm assuming they still do. Uh, look at that one. If you don't have one, it, I, it will. You go day by day, and it tells the month and you, you read. But it does a good job of explaining the verses and I need that help of understanding what is being said here. On a very, uh, every week, very probably in one day in a month that it kind of misses the mark for me. But it's really good. But anyway, we started that practice. If we miss it now, we're, uh, we feel like maybe our day, well, we haven't missed it. We do it. The only time we missed it, and I was tempted to do it over the phone when I was in Oklahoma City a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I didn't, I should have. But with that said, what's happened is now I go get the coffee and she gets to stay in bed. God has blessed me by allowing me to do that. And it, every time I bring her coffee, she has a big smile on her face. And it's just the way that I give back. Just like yesterday at the farm, my brother had done so much for me and for us we have some cattle and other things, and he stepped in while I couldn't do anything, and he did it. And this was just, oh, I can give back to him. It will make his, his operation so much s smoother. He'll be able to, won't have to deal with the electric issues we have on the farm over there. But anyway, so again, I want you to sincerely and think about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Is it casual? Yeah, I need you. Yeah, okay, sure, come on. Or is it day by day, hand in hand? Thank you for this. And now I ask him for, you know, hopefully Lisa will have something good for lunch. You know, something. No, I don't ever do that because she has great meals. <laughs> but uh, uh, the small stuff. I, I ask him to be in it. And we spend prayer. 
it just, I, I, I can't explain how it's re-energized our spiritual life, our relationship. We talk spiritual. Not only that, God has blessed me in so many other ways, watching my family members, whether it's my situation or whether it's what it, they've changed. They've changed. A niece of mine, she was going through a lot of struggles, more than I don't know that I could handle. She accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. And amen. She's on the right track. Another close relative is having anxiety issues, just, and God blessed him, and he's working through that. And when he and I get together, it used to be talking about cows and whatever. Now we talk spiritual things. Spiritual things. God has blessed so much. And in closing, I want to tell you this. One other story, and I have so many. Goodness, we could just spend how God is blessed. But while I was in the hospital, there was a, a Texas... Uh, West Texas has a nursing program and so nurses come in and can you imagine a nurse is assigned to me and have to watch me lay there I mean that's really exciting but uh, this was when I was in rehab so she did get to see me, the, the, the uh, therapist get, come in, get me out of bed walk me down picking each leg up, teaching it how to walk because that's what they had to do the, the occupational therapist teaching me how to put my clothes on and how to we did all these little things to get my coordination going again. She got to see all that. Anyway, during the first day, she said, there's something different about you. And I said, I've had other people tell me that. No, no, she said, there's, how, how do you, why is your attitude the way it is? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a wonderful community that's supporting me right now. And I know some of them are praying for me. I've got a great family. And they think, they're praying for me. And I said, besides that, it's my faith. That Christ is going to take care of me. She said, well, I want that to tell me some more about this. And I said, well, every day, 5 o'clock, I am, I am praying because I feel the anxiety of the day coming on me when you're rehab especially. Okay, what's going to happen today? But anyway, so uh, she said, well, so is that, yeah, I said, I pray every day and I just ask the Lord to, to be, for me to be able to bless people and so on. She said, wow, that's really, that's really neat. She said, I was raised a Catholic and I, I just haven't worked with my faith much. I haven't done much with it. I said, well, you know, okay. So she comes back the next day and at the end of the day she comes in and uh, uh, she said, well, I just want to let you know I went home and told my mom what you and I talked about. I said, oh, really? What did she say? She said, it's about time. So Mama had been praying a little bit. You could tell that. And she said, you know, the, her parting words to me were, you know, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on my faith. And I thought, thank you, Lord. I was able to be a blessing laying like this. Two or three weeks later, she finds me in the commons area. By then, I'd been able to get out of a wheelchair and wheel myself down to a commons area. And she's sitting over there in a the corner, and I'm finished visiting with some people. She comes over, and she sits down, and kind of like I am this morning. She just starts crying. She said, I told myself I wasn't going to do this. I said, what's, what's up? She said, I just want to let you know. I had a good friend in the hospital, and I was really concerned about him, but I didn't know how to pray. What did you do? Well, I called someone that was like you and asked him to teach, tell me how to pray. And she said, I just want to let you know that I did that. And I'm really working on my, my faith. And I, oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. You know, it doesn't get much better than that, folks. I'll tell you why. Well, thanks again for the opportunity. I could go on and on, and here we are. I was told by somebody in the congregation uh, not to linger too long. But uh, I, God has blessed me, and God has blessed me by being here in this community. I'd like to pray for you, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just want to lift this congregation up to you. I ask that your grace and mercy and your strength and your power come down on it. 
Bless each and every one that are here. Allow them and give them thoughts on how they can become even a better, stronger Christian. I thank you God, again, God, for the opportunity to be here and bless everyone. In your name I pray.